Tonight on Brumbies TV, James Dargaville and Michael Dowsett come into the studio. We find out Thomas Cubelli's ambitions for international rugby. And we have all the details you need to prepare for the Brumbies clash with the Sunwolves. With me is Thomas Cubelli, looking fresh after a week off. What did you get up to over the bye? Um, I've been in Sydney, in, um, in Mali Beach, for two nights there. Uh, hopefully, it was the, the weather was very good, and I've really been in, in the ocean. It's strange here in Canberra, thinking that you can be in the ocean at this time of the year, but because it's getting really cold. Um, so it was good to have a, a week off um, to uh, bring back the energy uh, because the tournament is getting tough and, and, and it's good to rest the body, I think. The Reds defeated the Sunwolves on the weekend, but they didn't do it easy. Do you think that there are some strengths to the Sunwolves team? Yes, I think it's, it's a very good team. I, I saw some games, I watched some, some games during the, the season. I know it's the first year in the competition, but still they are, are really solid. I saw the game against the Jaguars, against some of my Argentinian mates, and, and they, they did a great, a great game. So I think they are capable of doing of, of do great things in the field, so we have to be really, really aware. Well, let's have a look at some of the highlights, shall we? OK, let's do it. The Sunwolves arrived in Australia for their three-game tour and gave the Reds a good shake in Brisbane. The home side scored first off a penalty kick before Curtis Browning found the chalk. Curtis Browning gets the first try. The Sunwolves had their first real chance in the 22nd minute and Derek Carpenter scored the first of his double. Spend it off to him if he wasn't there. Browning scored his second to help the Reds maintain their lead in the second half. It's over. But the Sunwolves had the firepower to stay in touch. The Reds showed composure to run home with a 10-point win, their third of the season, 35-25. to 25. The Reds would be the only Australian side to win in Round 13 as the Crusaders outclassed the Waratahs in Christchurch. In wet conditions, the Crusaders weren't scared to throw the ball around and it worked. Down the long pass and across it goes to Ben Nichols. Israel Folau was at his usual best and Rob Horn made the most of a tricky offload. The, pass off. That's a try. That's yeah. the Crusaders went into the break ahead 17 points when Andy Ellis, playing his 150th game, linked with Richie Maonga in another rain-defying play. The Waratahs couldn't find holes in the Crusaders' backline, but Zach Guilford saw one next to the ruck to prevent the home side from taking the bonus points. The Crusaders' comfortable winners, 29 to 10. So, Thomas, you've spent six months in Canberra now. Uh, how do you like the city? I really like it. Um, I came here and, uh, with, and I heard what people say about Canberra. Like in Australia, they, they are, I think they're a bit uh, uh, too hard with Canberra. Uh, because I came here and I found a very nice city, very, uh, with a lot of nature and, and, and green, and green spaces to to, to be around, so I think it's a great city. Uh, on a slightly different note, Argentina come to Australia in September for the Rugby Championship. Uh, can we expect to see you playing for Argentina? Hopefully, uh, yeah, I would like to. Um, uh, I've been really working hard f uh, here for, to get a, another selection in, in Argentina, back in Argentina, uh, because you know there's uh, the new Jaguar team and uh, most of the, the team of Argentina is going to be picked from there, so um, it was, it's like um, difficult for me because I, I, I know that I have to uh, work really hard and to, to really be picked over there, so hopefully if things uh, go well, I, I will be there and really enjoying because I love to play uh, for my country and, and, and put that, uh, that, that, that jersey. Uh, now, back here in Canberra, you've uh, had the combination with Christian Leliafano this year. How have you enjoyed playing alongside him? Yeah, a lot. He made me things really easy. He, he helped me a lot. So I'm really, like, I really appreciate that. Uh, 
and I think if I I'm comfortable with my space in the team, it's because of him. So I, it's good to sometimes really uh, say it, and, and I want, this is a good way to to say to you and to say to the people that he's really helped me. Fantastic, Thomas Kubeli. Thanks for spending some time on Brumbies TV. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. The Sharks swam home 53 points to nil over the Kings. The onslaught sparked by Springbok fly half Pat Lambie, who kicked five conversions and scored twice. Six of the home side's eight tries came in the first half. The second was set up by a Lambie intercept, just short of the 20 minute mark. And it is Paul Yodon, second try for the Sharks. And Yodon gets his third of the season. Lambie secured his double and the final try of the match in the 49th minute and the Kings are still searching for their second win of the season. The Bulls made it two from two after a tough Australian tour, upsetting the Stormers in Pretoria. The sides traded blows in penalty kicks in the first half. At 6-all, the Bulls forwards laid the groundwork for the first try of the match just after half time. Francois Brummer kicks this penalty from 40 metres out to extend his side's lead. The Bulls soaked up a period of extended pressure before the wall finally cracked in the 68th minute. The game on a knife's edge, replacement fly half Tian Schumann split the post with five minutes to go to secure the 17-13 victory. Around the grounds, the Chiefs made light work of the Rebels. The Blues beat the Force and the Argentinians struggled against the Lions. The Chiefs have replaced the Crusaders at the top while the Waratahs remain ahead in the Australian Conference. The Brumbies are hot on their heels though in the fight for a home final while the Sunwolves are one from the bottom. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think the first couple of years is a bit of a, a shock to the system, particularly around kind of, I guess, June and whatnot. But yeah, I, th I think we're pretty used to it now. It's, uh, it's a long way from Avalon, but uh, <laughs> the NRC last year was the real eye-opener training uh, at 7pm at night, getting down to minus four, minus five degrees. So that was a bit of a shock. I, I guess, as you said, they're new to the competition this year, but um, I think, you know, they've had some, they've had a lot of games, I think, that have been actually reasonably close and, and they got that first win there over the, uh, I think it was the Jaguars in, in Tokyo and they're, uh, they're really good, particularly on the edge with, with guys like Yamada and, and stuff playing really well. They've, uh, they've got a good fly half as well in Pissy. He's been uh, an international for a while now and playing some good footy over in Japan. So there's a few threats all across the board. Bonga, Josh Man Ray kind of yells the occasional phrase out in, uh, in Japanese. You don't really know what he's talking about. I think there's a, it's quite a young squad as well, so I'm sure they were there a while ago now. So. Yeah, I definitely think if you look at their, uh, their home games, you're, they're packed out pretty well, and particularly against the, the Jaguars when they won. It was a pretty uh, exciting finish for them. Uh, I think I think the Brumbies fans will hopefully turn up in in larger numbers and yet yeah, drown out any uh, I guess some will support that's there. Yeah, it was, it was special. I mean, you, I was very grateful for the opportunity that the Brumbies had given me and was you know, so excited to run out alongside guys who I'd been playing, playing in teams either you know, with or against since under 15s. You know, guys like Christian Leatherfano, Pat McCabe, a few other guys that you, you get to know pretty well over the years and become good mates with. And to be in a different team, but to have those sorts of faces around was, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. If it's a Saturday game, I usually try and get to the farmer's market. That's always a good way to get up reasonably early, get out there and not think about the game too much. Um, maybe, get, maybe grab some breakfast there. And then I don't really have a, too much of a set routine. I think it's more about getting a few things done at home. Individually for me, the big focus is always to 
make sure that I'm enjoying my rugby and and continuing to try and work on different parts of my game to improve. I think that's one of the exciting things as a rugby player is that you never really feel like you've you've got there or you've you've become the best player you can because there's always stuff you can improve on. And the Brumbies coaches certainly facilitate that really well with reviews and and trying to get the most out of everyone. The big thing for me is, is to get out there knowing that you've done all the hard work and now it's time to enjoy yourself. And yeah, games are, games are tough, but they're a lot of fun. Definitely not a fact. I think um, one of the, I think it was Chris Dutton has just kind of made up that I was a good cook and that I've, ha I've had a cookie recipe or something. And just these rumors about me cooking have just snowballed into one massive lie, unfortunately. I think Jared's just even worse. So <laughs> any, I guess any, anything cooking wise from our household does come from me. And uh, although it's not great, it's definitely better than him. I guess just with uh, a few injuries at the moment and uh, Getting a few opportunities, you just kind of have to make the most of them when you get them, especially with such a strong starting team. So just keep going off a few strong performances and move forward from that. Yeah, it's actually really good. I guess the rehab team and whatnot at Brumbies is, I guess, known for getting guys back in, in pretty good shape. And yeah, I was, I was really happy with how, I guess, everything around the shoulder went. A bit disappointing to not be, um, I guess, getting game time through that period. but. Yeah, I feel really good now. Yeah, I think so. Like, uh, I think it can get pretty competitive on the field, and I think that's the way Bernie likes it. But uh, no, off the field, we're yeah, we're as, as good as mates as anyone in the squad. Uh, I think there's been a, quite a few upsets uh, early in the year. Um, Dow's team, the Owls were playing some good rugby, and Gungahlin have won a few games as well. But I think it's pretty hard to go past Tuggeranong and Royals. Tuggeranong's, I guess, always going to be really strong. But I think uh, I think my second game was against Queanbeyan, and they were. They were also looking pretty promising, so yeah, I think I think it's a two-horse race in Queanbeyan or Tuggeranong. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a really, really interesting one. Probably, uh, I guess, a lot tighter than people, I guess, anticipate. I think Eddie Jones has got England in a really good um, headspace, particularly, particularly the Ford Pack. So yeah, I think the, um, I think it's going to be pretty close. But yeah, I think the Wallabies probably two-one. Yeah, I think a clean sweep, three-nil. Yeah, I'm not sure what the plans are. We haven't really been told too much about yeah, it, just no. to keep that week free. So I guess we Benny go. likes to keep it pretty super rugby focused, but hopefully we're both on the plane because it sounds like a pretty good awesome trip. trip yeah. yeah, I think really confident. I think uh, as you've seen the last few weeks, we've kind of been, I guess, getting back to that, I guess, uh, expansive style of play. And it was a good win over the Bulls a, f a few weeks ago. And yeah, I think if we can continue a bit of momentum, we're definitely still one of the teams to beat in this competition. Definitely, I think there's a lot of good teams in this Super Rugby. As you can see by the New Zealand Conference, it's pretty stacked. So uh, winning each and every week is pretty important, especially coming into the crucial end of the season. So we need the wins. Let's take a look at how the Brumbies match up with the Sunwolves. It's the first time these teams have met as the Sunwolves find their feet in the competition. The Sunwolves' Akito Yamada is the equal top try scorer in the competition, but the Sunwolves as a team are ranked 14th for crossing the line. The Brumbies boast the top point scorer of the Australian and Japanese teams, and Leo Leofano may have a chance to increase his lead this weekend, with the Sunwolves struggling to keep their opposition away from the chalk. Keep an eye on the scrum as it will be a battle of the locks this weekend. In other games, the Waratahs are back home hosting the Chiefs tomorrow night. On Saturday, the Argentinians play the Kings, the Blues host the Crusaders and the Cheetahs head to Newlands. On Sunday, the Bulls look to make it two in a row against the Lions and the Rebels host the struggling force. Worst singer will have to be Itavea. Um, most of the time, he doesn't even know the lyrics of the of the song, but yeah, he just jams out his own words, and uh, sometimes it, it just doesn't make sense. So I probably just have to say Ida. I'm gonna have to say Ida again. <laughs> He's definitely not the best singer, but Ida Vea would count himself as the best. But um, he, he thinks he's a man because he can hit those high notes. But yeah, no. Ida Vea, worst singer. Probably Scott Fardy because he mumbles so much. You've got no idea what he's saying. Joe Powell. Uh, probably myself. If anyone heard me, you'd probably say me. Joe Tamani, terrible, <laughs> terrible. Uh, Joe, Joe Tamani thinks he can sing? Thinks he can sing. Thinks he can sing. <laughs> Joe is Tamani. Does he? Joey. Does he think he's worth, he thinks he's good, but he's not. Clearly he's not. Joe Tamani. Joe Tamani. Joey T, he's always a favourite. Uh, sings no matter what. 
Um, Nigel, he uh, sings every now and then. My roommate, Lousy, I uh, like to sing in his room behind closed doors and in the shower. Um, I don't recommend any of them, but uh, no, they all think they're, they're pretty good. Uh, boom, 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 boom. I want you in my room and spend the night together, together in my room. All right. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, lock them doors and turn them lights down low. Put some music on it soft and slow. Ooh, that's a bit low. Yeah, <laughs> that's me, probably. West are still struggling to find their feet in the John Ident Cup after a loss to Gungarland despite a promising display. The Eagles arrived at Jamison Oval as favourites, but the Lions' line-out ball kept the visitors grounded early. Winger Johnny Pio had the second try minutes later in the same spot. Gingarlan are proving real title contenders by taking opportunities when they arrive. Ben Coots was shown yellow for a professional foul and the Eagles made use of the extra man in the scrum. And they get the five points next to the uprights. Gungarland scored again just after half time, but the Lions had an answer in their mall. And it is a try this afternoon. We're sitting back and you can hear the cheers. The lead wouldn't change again as Gungarland continued to find gaps, especially when they started to feel under pressure. This Jamie Cott's ninth try in seven games this season. Over the line for Gungarland, they extend their lead yet again. West scored two unanswered tries, but there wasn't enough time for a full comeback. The final score, 31-27.